Well, greetings from the Coast Guard Academy Admissions Office. My name is Alex Eames, Associate Director for Volunteer Programs, and I am here with another one of our admissions partner webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about the U.S. Coast Guard Academy Minority Outreach Team, or AMOT. Uh, the AMOT members are part of our admissions partner program and are a subset of this program and do help us uh, with a number of recruiting and outreach responsibilities. So with that, um, I'll get started and into the presentation. We have with, with us today some of our admissions partners online. Uh, so they may be asking questions as we go through the presentation, which I may stop, pause, and answer for them, um, or save for the end when we do a little quick Q&A. If you are a student or parent kind of interested in this information, you're welcome to continue watching. This is uh, good stuff to uh, pick up on and gain further insight into our admissions process. Um, but it is primarily intended for our admissions partners uh, interested in learning more and taking advantage of this fantastic resource. So um, thank you again for being here online. Uh, this is a double feature day for me. I was just uh, online momentarily or just a little while ago with the director of admissions as well, uh, sharing his insights into the past year, uh, his praise for the admissions partner program and all the hard work that you do. Um, so I want to keep the good vibes rolling and kick this thing off right. So let's get into it. On today's presentation, we're going to kind of get into uh, our main team or our affinity team leaders uh, for AMOT and our guest introduction. I did invite some of our AMOT members online, and if any of them are able to join us today, um, I'll make sure to get them uh, on screen or on audio uh, to answer any questions. But at the very least, what I will do is give folks the resources available so that they can personally reach out to uh, our affinity leaders or any other AMOT members uh, to gain further insight, to uh, connect students with these folks as far as getting them information, resources, and materials. Um, and so uh, one way or another, we will get folks in touch with our AMOT. Uh, we'll go over a quick overview of the program itself, uh, cover some CGA by the numbers information, go over some success stories in which in, at that time, I'll switch over to uh, a bit more of a screen sharing mode. So you'll see uh, kind of my screen pop up there on uh, covering our outreach team information available online at our website, www.uscga.edu. And then uh, last, we'll cover just a brief kind of how to join if you're interested um, and you are eligible, and then go over any admissions partner questions. So in the meantime, like I said, uh, just make note of any questions, comments, concerns, throw those out as we go along. Uh, we will be wrapped up uh, within the 30 minute time frame for this presentation. Uh, so that will be uh, right at the 1600 mark. All right. So just introducing a few of our affinity, uh, affinity leaders here. Um, now, AMOT is a much larger program, as we'll go over in a few slides, but I just wanted to get some important names out there for everyone to recognize. I did not have an image for absolutely everybody, but I tried to cover uh, as many people as I possibly could. Um, and these are incredible uh, volunteers who, in addition to their uh, regular partner duties, are also uh, very heavily involved in the AMOT program. So we have for our Asian Pacific American uh, representation, Lieutenant Commander Hoon Park, who works here on campus and is actually coming here to the admissions office uh, to be one of our senior members on staff. Lieutenant Commander Jesse Diaz, not pictured here, but uh, is one of his close affiliates and will likely be taking over uh, the main APAC affinity uh, leader role uh, once Hoon comes into the admissions office. For African-American Black affinity leader, that's Commander Andrea Parker-Smith. Uh, Andrea is an incredible representat uh, representative of this team. Uh, she is just a ball of positive energy and really an incredible uh, influence uh, for the admissions partner program. She does some great work with students and, out, and outreach. If you haven't gotten a chance to meet her or, or get that opportunity, please take advantage of it. Uh, she is certainly someone you want to meet uh, in the Coast Guard. For our Hispanic affinity leaders, you have Lieutenant Commander David Smith. Um, there on the bottom right hand of the screen wearing the uh, Bravos and the combination cover. Um, really fantastic working with Commander Smith, a super active member uh, here on campus many times, and he works hand in hand with Lieutenant Victoria Schreffler, um, a junior, more junior member, uh, very relatable to our young students out there, um, great to speak with, and, uh, and, and very helpful in this process. And then last but not least, we have Mr. Ken Jacobs, who uh, kind of 
more uh, not kind of unofficially took over as our Native Peoples representative, uh, Mr. Jacobs and his uh, wife, uh, Marion. Uh, God bless her. She she travels all over uh, as a missions partner, but with uh, CAM, and they go and they speak with students uh, all over the country, um, to paying particular attention to those underserved areas in, in the center of our country and those underserved areas um, on some of uh, the uh, Native kind of uh, preserves um, or res reservations that are out there, speaking with students, sharing those opportunities of the Coast Guard and Coast Guard Academy. And I know that recently during some of our missions partner trainings, we also had the opportunity to share that information with some volunteers who live near, uh, nearby uh, some of these uh, kind of federally protected areas. And uh, we're also interested in getting engaged with and involved with those students. So uh, we will certainly expand on that outreach as well. So these are going to be some key players that you want to pay attention to, uh, get a chance to meet, uh, interact with, and get students in touch with if necessary uh, with any future student uh, or parent family interaction. So just covering a basic an overview of AMOT. So what is AMOT? What's the idea behind it? Why was it created? Well, it really helps us support the OID, which is Office of Inclusion, Diversity and Missions Vision. So uh, OID creates this vision to create and maintain a supportive and inclusive space where all can thrive militarily, academically, athletically, and socially. And AMOT plays a large role in this capacity. It's all part of our strategic plan. Uh, which is in the process of being revised uh, for our new um, date ranges here, 2019 through 2024, uh, which is to attract and retain a highly talented and diverse core cadets, faculty, and staff, uh, to enhance a performance-based inclusive environment, and to develop culturally competent leaders. So uh, we will certainly keep that uh, in mind as we move forward. Uh, you'll see here that we recently actually uh, almost a little over a year ago, March 24th, 2018, uh, signed into effect our Superintendent Instruction 1131.1 Alpha, which is the role of the Academy Minority Outreach Team, or AMOT. So it was made official in 2018, but had been in existence much longer than that. Um, we needed to make sure that we set some parameters, some guidelines uh, kind of uh, described or um, you know, we, we laid out the scope of what AIM would do, define that scope so that it wasn't too large to tackle and it was an effective mission. Um, but currently we uh, have 90 AMOP members enrolled in our partner program, which is about 10% of our overall program. Uh, for we'll, we'll talk a little bit in a bit on how to join and kind of those qualifying uh, quote unquote qual kind of qualifying factors laid out in this superintendent instruction on how to contribute and join the AMOP program. But what they're responsible for is everything ranging from recruiting to outreach to lead generation, mentorships, partnerships, you know, working with community based organizations and local schools, um, you know, working with admissions and OID to provide us guidance as well because you know, we use them uh, much like we use the admissions partner. Uh, advice, management and advisory board to kind of advise us on uh, direction and provide projects to as far as uh, ways to improve. Uh, we ask the same of our AMOT affinity leaders and welcome any feedback or suggestions from any of our AMOT members. Um, additionally, we work with AMOT on yield generation, so providing them information on students appointed to the academy or the prep school program. Uh, to get into their homes, to talk with the families, to get the student comfortable with the idea of attending, um, to get the family's questions answered that could, may potentially not be able to be answered by uh, someone not of that affinity or not of that ethnicity, that race, or those backgrounds. Um, and then last but not least, uh, really just act as that student family resource. So uh, that's ultimately what we want is we want a family uh, approaching the Coast Guard Academy uh, as a new idea, never having before had a member uh, join the Coast Guard Academy. And this is not, you know, only for those types of families, but really is helpful uh, for those students. Um, maybe first generation college going students, maybe students who have never been a part of a military organization, or maybe they have, maybe they're a JRTC student or their, or their father was you know, in a, in a service or their mother was in the service and they want to uh, explore this option. Well, 
you know, this is a great resource to put those folks in touch with uh, so that they can really get firsthand knowledge and experience on what to expect. So just quickly by the numbers here, um, AMOD again helps to support our current student body, which is 36% underrepresented students, 38% uh, female. We have seven student diversity councils, which boasts uh, a participation of 805 cadets who are involved in some capacity. Uh, and that's out of a little over 1,000 cadets. So you're talking almost 80% of the core involved in some sort of diversity council here on campus. Um, and that ranges everything from uh, LGBTQ to uh, race, ethnicity. So it, it can range a number of different things um, to religion. So uh, we want to make sure that our students here are welcome, that they have multiple outlets and venues to kind of speak uh, in a comfortable, safe setting. Um, and our AMOT represent representatives are often involved in those conversations. AMOT also helps uh, guide and mentor our uh, DPEs or diversity peer educators. Now, this is a relatively new program here at CGA, but it has been written into superintendent instruction. Um, so uh, we have DPE representatives in the core uh, who are trained. Uh, these are cadets who are trained um, to, and they're given uh, both professional and kind of uh, almost informal uh, training uh, to act as liaison or act as some sort of kind of uh, conduit for uh, for this constructive uh, conversation or even discourse. So if it's a healthy, uh, respectful discourse, they're there to kind of help moderate that and make sure that uh, you know cadets have uh, these outlets and these resources to turn to. AMOD helps with our Respect Inclusion Summer Experience, which is the RISE program. If you're a student watching this or perhaps a partner that's been involved for a while, um, you will notice that uh, the RISE program is available there in the summer before SWAB summer starts. If you're a student watching, you've likely already been um, invited to this program or been at least made aware that it exists. And it's for uh, mainly for those underrepresented students or first generation college going students who may need one or two extra days uh, to kind of ease into the SWAP summer experience. You'll come here, you'll meet other classmates, you'll kind of become familiar with the campus, uh, with each other uh, in the class, and then uh, you'll be able to um, more easily transition into that SWAP summer lifestyle. Uh, they also help with SWAP summer and with the AIM program. Uh, each week of AIM, um, I have it as a mandatory requirement that at least one of the participating admissions partners is an AMOD member. And now luckily uh, this year, we're able to fulfill that. And I think of the last six weeks um, that we have been able to do this. So three weeks last summer and three weeks this summer, uh, we've actually been able to have all new folks, almost every experience come in and help work with the students, answer questions, mentor, uh, provide mentorships, provide kind of that nice chaperone experience for um, our participants. They're also there for swap summer. Whether it's in an official capacity or unofficial capacity, if they need to be brought in for any sort of officer panel, whatever it may be, um, they're there to assist. <coughs> Excuse me. They are here and participating very heavily in Eclipse Week, which is a full week uh, here at CGA, um, culminated in kind of the Eclipse celebration, the talent show on a Friday and Saturday. Um, that is all um, a, a, a essentially a stand down for diversity inclusion here at CGA. Um, I understand that some folks may have lost video. That's perfectly fine. If you can still hear me, see the presentation, we'll keep on moving along. So Eclipse Week is huge for our AMOT participation. And then last but not least here in the admissions office, uh, we use AMOT also for our Genesis Invitationals, primarily focusing on underrepresented students and first generation college going students and our Academy Experience programs. That's for all accepted students. So. They're a tremendous resource. They come to do a lot. They are very heavily involved um, out of most of our members. They're probably some of our most active uh, in those 90 folks. They're doing a lot out there, um, sometimes without us really even knowing because it extends beyond uh, recruiting outreach into mentorship when these relationships are formed, these professional relationships. And the mentorship piece really helps um, in that yield process and in the, in the success uh, of that cadet throughout their four years. Okay. So now transitioning, success was a good transition. So let's head over to uh, screen sharing. And if you just give me one moment here, hopefully I don't lose video. Um, 
but you will should see a different image on your screen. And we're going to be presenting some information here pertaining to um, our online resources. So you should see a, uh, a preview right now um, or the full screen. What you are looking at is our website, www.uscga.edu backslash outreach team. You can reach this by going to our admissions dropdown and then scrolling down to Outreach Team. Clicking on that will bring up this resource and you can look into the history of AMOT or history of underrepresented students at CGA and our Outreach Team members to get directly in touch with them. Scrolling down this page, you'll see that the Academy Minority Outreach Team uh, has a few members that we highlight from Lieutenant Natasha Hope to Lieutenant Commander Hoon Park to Commander Marcus Kennedy and all in between. And we'll be adding more profiles to this as we get more information from folks out in the field. These are all active duty members. Um, one of the uh, asks for our admissions, uh, our Academy Minority Outreach Team, is that our AMOT members are on an active duty or reserve status. That's one of the requirements that we ask. Uh, it really does help in the, in the sharing of information that's updated for active duty folks. Um, and it ensures that there is that kind of tie back to the academy. Now, of course, we've made exceptions for uh, membership in the past. Always happy to do that as well and always available to take, um, to take uh, further recommendations. I'll, um, let me see if I go off camera. I do want to make sure that folks uh, do see the resource. So you'll continue to hear me, but I want to make sure that you can see what I'm looking at. So again, this is our uscga.edu backslash outreach team website. You can access it through our home screen. And if you're following along at home or you have your phone out, you can certainly visit this at this time. And then down at the bottom, it kind of gives a general overview of some of those programs that AMOT participates in that you already heard me mention, such as Genesis Academy Experience Program, the International Orientation and Respect and Inclusion Summer Experience. Now I'll head to our outreach team members. And like I had mentioned before, I was gonna put you in touch with some of our AMOT folks. So if this is a resource that you are interested in uh, taking advantage of and working with, you wanna get in touch with these individuals. So um, this is also for um, our students out there and their families from these areas. Now keep in mind, we do try to keep these updated as uh, quickly as possible, but active duty members like to move around a lot and very quickly. So if they are uh, someone you're interested in, a phone call or an email is great, uh, but they may be in a different state or city by the time you reach out. So for instance, here you have Mr. Banks in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Mr. Kennedy, Savannah, Georgia, um, Mr. Hahn in Alameda, California, uh, Ms. Hope in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, we have Mr. Park, like I mentioned, here on campus, Mr. Smith in Washington, D.C., and Josh Woodford in uh, King George, Virginia. Now, these are just a few of our 90 uh, staff uh, for the AMOT program for the Academy Minority Outreach Team. And we can certainly put you in touch with someone more close to your local area or put a student in touch with someone from their local area. So that would be our... Uh, website accessed again through the admissions page down to outreach team. All right, so I'll switch back to our PowerPoint files again and finish out our presentation. So going back through, we covered a lot of information today about the Academy Minority Outreach Team. I think uh, one of their, their greatest accomplishments uh, was most recently um, our largest graduating class, the class of 2018 of African-American graduates, uh, something that I know many of our members are very proud of. Um, and I think that uh, in large part, the success of this class and future classes and the class of 2019 and beyond 
um, is, is due to the mentorships that are also established uh, through our Academy of Minority Outreach team. So uh, with our AMOT members coming on board, it's not just a recruiting uh, you know, tool. Uh, like many of our admissions partners are out there and they keep in touch with folks and they show up at the commencement at the end of their four years. Um, you know, there are uh, times when these AMOT members are, you know, going to families, uh, you know, celebrations and they're, you know, going to graduation at prep school and they are um, getting very heavily involved with the cadet experience, with the cadet life, with the uh, officer cadet mentorship all the way through and then beyond into the fleet to ensure that uh, someone is taken care of, that they're successful. Uh, that they can then accomplish what they, uh, what the AMOT member accomplished so many years ago. So I think it's a tremendous uh, resource. Uh, we're very pleased and happy to have uh, a, such an amazing out outreach team. Uh, since I came on board in 2017, we've seen the program grow by nearly 100% in participation. I'd like to continue that growth as well. Uh, so I want to put this video out there for anyone interested in joining. And if you are interested in joining, I think as it stated on the previous slide, uh, you want to contact either your AMOT Affinity leader um, or get in touch with uh, a known AMOT member. It could be one of the folks that I pointed out on the screen before on that EDU website or contact me directly and I'd be happy to set you up with that information for registration and becoming an admissions partner so that you can get trained on the most uh, the newest things here at CGA, get a, uh, outfitted, get equipped and go out and be successful with our applicants and cadets. So with that, um, I will wrap up my portion of this presentation. I appreciate everyone's uh, participation today, uh, their attention, and I will open up the floor to any questions, comments, concerns, anything of that nature. I wanna make sure that everyone uh, has their questions addressed before we log off today. And we are nearing uh, that half hour mark and the top of the hour at 1600. So with that, any questions from our uh, listening admissions partners today? If you'd like to provide questions, you can do so by using that instant messaging chat feature. It's the thought bubble on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, go click on that, and then you can uh, type your questions into the instant messaging feature that uh, comes up. I will read it out loud and kind of do my best to do justice uh, to answering it. Um, so uh, Mr. Hansen asked, do you prefer that AMOT uh, do interviews in lieu of admissions partners? So uh, just to kind of clarify here, our AMOT members are admissions partners. So they are in the admissions partner program. We have 90 AMOT members who are admissions partners currently. And I'm, I am looking to expand upon that um, in the future. Uh, do I prefer that AMOT conduct interviews? Absolutely not. I want to use the resource that is available for uh, the student in that local area. Uh, it could be that an AMOT member is not available there or not available to conduct an interview online or over the video teleconferencing um, or phone uh, capability. Uh, if a student um, you know, says that they've been identified to interview and they already have a relation with a professional relation with an AMOT member and they want to speak to that person uh, in particular, they're welcome to do so. If a student uh, is reached out to by an admissions partner and, um, you know, saying, hey, I've been uh, scheduled to work with you on your interview, um, one of the questions or concerns that might come up is, you know, I've already been working with someone. Is it okay if I work with them for my interview process? Um, I think that the way we conducted interviews this year was absolutely phenomenal. It was, uh, I was very happy with it. The, I know the director of admissions, all the way up to the superintendent, was very pleased with, with the results. Um, you know, AMOT's a great resource for this, but absolutely, uh, you know, not the, does not necessarily the preferred uh, method. So, if an AMOT member is available to work with a student, fantastic. We'll try to get that in, that accomplished uh, that way. Otherwise, uh, the available admissions partner is the uh, right resource for that job. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Any other questions today? Okay, not seeing any other questions coming up. Uh, I see Ms. Tolliver typing. Perhaps there is something. All right, wonderful. 
So not seeing any other questions come up, I want to thank everyone for being online today to learn more about the Academy Minority Outreach Team, a tremendous group of individuals here in the Admissions Partner Program and on campus. Um, I hope that you're able to share this information with folks. We want to keep growing this program. I think it is a very successful initiative and I want to see this uh, initiative grow uh, naturally over time. Uh, if you have more questions, concerns, you can contact me at any time at the admissions office. Again, my name is Alex Eames, Associate Director for Volunteer Programs. I can re be reached at alexander.g.eames at uscga.edu, and I'll put my email back up on the screen while we finish here. Thank you all. I hope you have a wonderful week, and as always, go Bears. <laughs>